lectures وهتبقى عن ال implantation of pacemaker techniques و diagnosis of early pacemaker complications أول حاجة أول step بتبقى دائم patient preparation should always have an informed consent على الرغم من ال pacemaker implantation is a low risk procedure لكن العيان لازم يبقى فاهم ان some complications might happen and pacemaker دوت is a lifelong commitment يعني ان هو هيحتاج بعد كده follow up some restrictions of the lifestyle will happen so the patient should have always an informed consent it's a very low mortality procedure لكن complications can occur وهنتكلم شوية عن الكمبليكيشنز اللي ممكن تحصل during the implantation أو في ال early preoperative period الحاجة التانية لازم يكون في at least routine pre-implantation lab tests CBC, kidney function tests, liver function tests, coagulation profile should have an ECG and echocardiogram ready and available The second step is management of the peri-procedural anticoagulation a lot of the pacemaker, uh, patients requiring a pacemaker may be on oral anticoagulants, so that can be warfarin or uh, one of the NOACs. Stand, the man can uh, we discontinue oral anticoagulant 44, 48 hours before the procedure, bridge with intravenous heparin, and reinitiate the oral anticoagulant on the day of the procedure or uh, after that. Uh, like in this practice has been associated with a higher risk of hematoma. Like, what do we do now? لو العيان is on warfarin, we continue the patient on warfarin, لكن with at the low range of the therapeutic, at the low level يعني of therapeutic range, يعني between 1.8 up to 2.5, you can operate safely, especially if you have diathermy in hand. لو العيان is on a NOAC, you can operate on the NOAC. You do not need to In most cases, we interrupt the NOAX uh, for one or uh, 48 hours, like and we do not bridge with uh, heparin. Uh, and this was associated with a lower risk of pocket bleeding and a shorter hospital stay. Uh, antibiotic prophylaxis is a controversial issue. Uh, most implanters prefer to give oral IV antibiotics to decrease the incidence of local or systemic infections based on limited data available. Uh, what about sedation? Usually the procedure is performed under local anesthesia. Uh, we will hot the local uh, xylocaine. Sometimes the patient may require uh, intravenous uh, light sedation uh, in conjunction with local anesthesia, especially during uh, uncomfortable steps in incision with pocket formation. Uh, we use a mixture of uh, midazolam and uh, fentanyl or midazolam with uh, pesadin or morphia. In very young patients or patients who are uh, 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 not very cooperative, they must have dementia or patients uh, uh, with panic attacks, more can attack general anesthesia. Uh, step level is the patient is draped, surgical drape, like procedure with him photal astara under complete aseptic uh, conditions. Uh, Sterilized and we use surgical uh, tools that involve uh, a scalpel, uh, scissors, uh, various uh, forms of uh, Uh, artery forceps, so uh, curved or straight, uh, uh, retractor, so it can self-retaining or not self-retaining. The site of the incision is usually the infraclavicular area, five centimeters long uh, incision. You can start the incision first and pocket formation, and then you start looking for the vein or uh, what we sometimes do, uh, we look for the vein first, we do the puncture first, venous access first, and then uh, create the incision and the pocket 
according to uh, the site of the uh, puncture. L advantage with disadvantages of venous uh, routes. Usually we are equal our rest mediate in this. The diagram is about an either deal clavicle here, with the mechanical first strip, where that would be no gram. The contrast we injected contrast in cannula placed in the left arm to see the venous anatomy. What you can see here that the cephalic vein it joins the axillary vein and the outer border of the first strip to form the subclavian vein. Elevate kela hayemshi across the chest to join the right subclavian vein and form the SVC. Most procedures uh, we aim for this part for the subclavian vein. Why? Because it's the widest caliber. It has uh, the easiest access. We have fluoroscopic landmarks and the meeting tile first strip ma el clavicle. However, the other sites, the sites at Tanya here, the cephalic vein, where the axillary vein, the cephalic vein access that requires surgical skills because you try to find the cephalic vein for the clavipectoral, for the deltopectoral groove, but I made a dissection, and then you cannulate it using a special tool provided. Tawa na khali risk of pneumothorax very low. Or risk of lead crush very low because you're away from the site of crowding tile bones, and doesn't require fluoroscopy because you look for it in the delta pectoral groove. However, as an size or caliber of the cephalic vein is small, it's sometimes very difficult to pass multiple leads. It's very difficult to do it in an ICD or a CRT. Uh, at the same time, in small caliber doubt, with calyl fibrosis, asra or thrombosis, asra of the vein, the extraction will be uh, difficult. The subclavian vein uh, doesn't require, will, will axillary vein doesn't require surgical skill much. The pneumothorax risk is higher with a subclavian vein cannulation because you're getting uh, more proximal access where you can injure the pleura easily. Uh, that's avoided with uh, axillary veins. Uh, risk of lead crush also. Subclavian vein is higher due to the crowding of the clavicle with the first strip, where it doesn't require a lot of fluoroscopy. Due to the wide caliber of the axillary and subclavian vein, you can pass multiple leads easily, and extraction, if needed, will be easier in the future. In case you had the venous puncture directly through without and by fluoroscopy, you can always do a venogram. Venogram can okay, be in linear machacle, like in it, we can each be in Taiwan, they must have the rest of it. There is a del axillary vein, del cephalic vein, where you can see here there is a distal stenosis of the subclavian vein. Without more, can you have the lead passage saw? Here you can see complete interruption of subclavian vein with the collaterals bridging to. Across يعني the site of the complete stenosis. إيه الحاجات اللي ممكن تعمل كده لو العيان كان في ICU مركب central line or previous catheter for hemodialysis مثلاً أو previous cardiac surgery. أو it can be idiopathic. It can just find that the left subclavian vein is absent. أو في هذه الحالة you will go to the right side prepared by with venogram. Right. After that, you uh, make the incision and you create a pocket here. Uh, we create the pocket by blunt dissection using either a blunt tool, like a straight or a curved uh, uh, artery, or uh, using your fingers. The goal is to make a crushing blood vessels instead of using a sharp instrument like a scalpel or a scissor. That what can can damage bleeding that cannot be easily controlled. While blunt dissection helps you create a nice pocket. I'll add the device that you're going to use. If you're going for a single chamber or dual chamber device, usually the pocket is small to accommodate two or three fingers. For an ICD or a CRTD, you need a deeper and a bigger pocket. You already have. A guide wire passing through the subclavian vein. 
one or two or three على حسب عدد الليمز اللي هتركبها and then you insert حاجة اسمها pillowages pillowages ده سواشيس اللي بنستعمله في الأسطرة في الكورونري لكن في في حاجة مختلفة إن هو it can be peeled بعد ما بتدخل ال lead you need to get this sheets out الشيس العادي مش هتعرف تطلعه من البيس ميكر لكن this sheets particularly you can break it and then you can peel it off the base maker lead after you finish or even early on after you introduce your lead. دي أشكال الليد ده الليد تيب ده حاجة اسمها passive fixation lead ده what it's a lead that have في آخره تكاء tiny hooks that can be fixed easily to the trabeculation of the ventricle from so much red for right ventricular pacing and it's almost disappeared now ma bash had to use it we went for the active fixation leads the ones are active fixation lead b you see b here you can see there is something hiding inside the lead when after deployment of the coil the coil da wa tabara an haga bitallaha by specific mechanism that gets fixed at the tip uh, of the lead to help the fixation for the wall for the myocardium فممكن تستعمله في اي حاجه ممكن تستعمله في الرايت فينتكل في ديفينتلي ده الحاجه الوحيده اللي ممكن تستعملها في الرايت اتريم عشان السموس وول بتاع الرايت اتريم طيب وات وي سي ان دي ان اي حاجه اسمها ستايلت البيس ميكر ليد لوحده لو مسكته في ايدك اتس فيري سوفت اند كان نوت بي ايزلي مانج فيري سوفت فعلشان تدي له كونسيستنسي وتعرف تتحكم فيه وتحركه وتطلعه لازم تدخل جواه ستايلت الستايلت دوت بيبقى حاجة شبه الجايد واير لكن it doesn't go through the end of the lead هو بيقف عند اخرة الليد ما بيطلعش منه وبيجي باشكال مختلفة ممكن يجي straight ممكن يجي على شكل حرف J والstraight دوت ممكن تعمل عليه curve انت بايدك تشكله بالمنظر اللي انت عايزه وهنشوف ده ممكن يستعمل فيه فمثلا if you want to uh, you already have uh, you advance the lead through the pillow issues You advance it to the subclavian vein. You advance it to uh, SVC, back here to the right atrium, and then you want to cross a tricuspid annulus. Usually, if you advance the lead with a stylet inside, a straight stylet inside, you will end up pushing the lead from the SVC, the right atrium, at the nasal for the IVC. So you need to create a small curve on the stylet. I give the stylet a straight down. Do a little curve. And you shake it with your hand. المنظر and ده uh, هيخلي الليد ياخد configuration معينة طيب how to reach the RV uh, through the tricuspid annulus ممكن بطريقة من ثلاثة الطريقة الوسطانية اللي اسمها drop down method دي الطريقة الموست commonly used you create a curve and you advance the RV lead all the way to the right ventricle and if you advance it more it will go to the RVOT And then you withdraw a curved stylet inside, and you advance a straight stylet. A straight stylet with gentle manipulation of the lead will allow the tip of the lead to fall into the RV apex. A طريقة دي اسمها drop down method. في طريقة تانية إنك تحاول تدخل the RV بالكوع بتاع الليد. يعني you create a curve inside the right atrium, and then you advance the lead. عن طريق الحته الكيرفد اللي فيه and then you advance the state stylet to straighten the lead so it falls at the RV apex. الطريقه الثالثه انك you create a nice curve that allows you to cross the tricuspid annulus and advance the lead to the desired position. طريقه ال direct crossing ديت بتبقى ظريفه جدا if you want to aim for a septal position, a mid-septal position, rather than the RV apex. The way to drop down method is the best way to get you to the RV apex for stability. After you put the RV lead in, you confirm the position in the RAO and the LAO position. In the RAO position, you will see the lead that is in the right atrium, Crossing a tricuspid annulus, at least we have a small hump, and then reaching all the way to the apex. With the LAO position, you will find the lead facing the vertebral column. That means no septal. If it's facing outside, that means no facing the lateral wall of the right ventricle. 
we always aim for an apical uh, septal position. Apical layer, علشان that's the most stable uh, position for uh, passive fixation leads and for active fixation leads. Well, septal because it's the more physiologic as much as possible. Type. What if you decide to implant the pacemaker in a septal, non-apical position, and you want to implant it at the mid septum? Why would you want to do that? But do aiming for a more physiologic site of pacing uh, to avoid a, a more dyssynchrony in the future. Uh, you will find that for the RAO position, badal ma dipping down to the RV apex, you will find it pointing upwards uh, for the septum, for the mid RV wall. Uh, with the LAO position, you will find it, you will find it badal badal ma basus to the top, or basus to the towards the septum, near the vertebral column. Uh, the passive fixation leads, the passive fixation leads, they can be used as a man for the RV apex. The small tines, they become lodged in the trabecular uh, at the apex. Or later on, fibrosis develops for not to hold. But the active fixation leads, we uh, have a helix or screw uh, that extends to the endocardial where the subendocardial tissues using a special tool included with the equipment. فده منظره وهو ال active fixation lead وهو ال coil not deployed yet وهنا وال coil while it is deployed. After you place the 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 after you fix the lead so passive or active fixation lead for the RV, بنعمل intraoperative testing. The intraoperative testing ده وده بنوصل a certain cable. Usually, the red and blue. Red yet, but it's marked on the ring. Will sorry, will black or blue? It's marked on the tip of the lead. The goal of it is two things. The goal of it is that we need the sensing and the threshold. The sensing means the intrinsic activity of the myocardium to see if the pacemaker can sense, can detect the electric activity of the ventricle. بمعنى لو الهارت ريت مثلا 30 او 45 وي وونت تو سي ذات ذا بيس ميكر كان سنس ذس اند وي يوجوالي لو في يوني بولر الكتروجرام يو كان سي ذير از سمثينج لايك ان انجري كارنت ده معناه انك انت يو ار ويل بوزيشن او فيكسد اجينست المايكارد الحاجه الثانيه انك بتعمل ستريشول تيستينج الستريشول دوت ان احنا عاوزين نشوف ايه اقل انرجي That can capture the ventricle. So we do the pacing. The heart rate is faster than the ion. Usually, if the heart rate is 60, we don't pace at 80. If it's 40, we don't pace at 60. We avoid very fast heart rate to avoid suppression of the intrinsic activity, and we lower the output. That we use, whether it's a temporary battery or a programmer, to see at what point we will lose the capture. Well, we start at, uh, uh, 5 volts, 4 volts, 3, 2, 1. But can it 0.1 and 0.9, 0.8, 0.7, 0.6. Like the mal capture lost. Here we can see consistent capture of oh, VP, VP, VP. Cool, that the pacemaker is well captured. Lahad 0.6 volt. Dik at after haga amal consistent capture, but at 0.5 or 0.4, the capture was lost. So the threshold here is 0.6. What are the acceptable uh, parameters? For uh, atrium, in sensing, we want to see a P wave higher than 1.5 millivolt and an R wave more than 5 millivolt. However, you might accept lower values if multiple sites have been already uh, tested and found uh, unacceptable. In threshold, you want to see a threshold less than one at uh, the time of implantation, and the lower the threshold, the better. Uh, however, like sensing, sometimes you will accept higher values if you cannot go to uh, a desired threshold. And impedance, impedance here, a resistance to the electric current, usually it ranges from 400 to 1,000, and will vary according to manufacturer. Like in values more than 1,000, usually indicate that the lead is not in a proper location, and uh, you need to find to to uh, to change the lead uh, position. Uh, after you implant the RV lead and you fix it in place and you test it and find it well, 
usually go for uh, the, you introduce another lead, right HL lead for a dual pacemaker. Next steps, you go to the SVC. Like in this time, you aim for the right HL appendage. Uh, you use the J-shaped uh, uh, stylet, the high khali, the tip of the pacemaker hooked upwards, and then you pull the pacemaker, the, the lead, until uh, it gets hooked into the right HL appendage, and you deploy the uh, active fixation coil, the high khali, yes, but from the right HL appendage. You can try some uh, light traction to make sure that it is in position, and uh, uh, you go for the testing for the A wave, for the threshold and for the impedance, and you make sure everything is all right. Sometimes in patients, especially post-operative patients, right atrial appendage become, is very shallow. Uh, it is used for cannulation of the right atrium during uh, by, on the bypass machine for uh, valve replacement method uh, during cabbage. Uh, fa is the right atrial appendage may become fibrosed or very shallow and will not support your lead. Uh, so you can go for uh, implantation in uh, the right atrial free wall. And after uh, implantation, you make sure but fluoroscopically the AP or right uh, anterior oblique that uh, your lead is in the right atrial appendage. We come in for lateral view, you will find uh, uh, the atrial lead point uh, directed anteriorly indicating that it is in the right atrial appendage. After that, you will attach uh, the end of the lead. We know that the leads available currently in the pacemakers all uh, universal, uh, have a universal end called IS-1 that can fit, as I have written IS-1, for example, the battery of the in a VVI pacemaker. Uh, it can fit uh, into the header here, and then you screw it in a faculty that provided my battery uh, to start pacing, and then you implant the battery in uh, the pocket. Type uh, L site of the pacemaker pocket. We implant most pacemakers uh, anterior to the pre pectoral fascia, and the idea is the skin, the superficial fascia, the deep fascia, and the pre pectoral fascia, and the pectoralis major muscle. Most patients, uh, we do uh, the, the plane of the pacemaker pocket, we have a pre-pectoral anterior to the pre-pectoral fascia or deep to the subcutaneous tissue. In patients where the subcutaneous tissue is lacking, sometimes we open the pectoralis major muscle and we implant the pacemaker in a submuscular uh, position. Like in Fumazam al Halad, we have a pre-pectoral on the pectoralis major uh, fascia. We have a wound and we close the wound in two layers. The first is the deep layer or the deep fascia, usually a continuous suture using an absorbable suture material like Vicryl. And the skin closure is the way of the two. Most operators now use a continuous closure with absorbable uh, sutures like Vicryl. Like in sometimes uh, some uh, operators close it through interrupted silk sutures that need to be removed during follow-up. After uh, that, you cover the wound in sterile dressing and uh, you instruct the patient to keep the area where the pacemaker was inserted clean and dry. After about seven uh, 10 days, a follow-up visit is scheduled to check the wound integrity. After that, the patient may take a shower. Uh, the instructions will allow lying in and look to the wound daily to make sure that it's sealing and to contact us if uh, there is increased drainage or bleeding from the insertion site, increased opening of the incision, redness around the incision site, warmth along uh, the incision, or a fever. After that, uh, scheduled follow-up visits after 10 days of implantation. If there is any suture material to be removed, like an amal be interrupted silk suture or any haga, it should be removed. But in the ayanin, the most of the ayanin, they have them vitreal sutures, so they have to be absorbable. But we have to make sure that everything went well. And during this visit, we repeat the testing of the battery voltage. But the battery voltage is normal. 
uh, we repeat testing of uh, the leads. So I can uh, sensing with threshold with uh, impedance. We repeat this test after one month and then every six to 12 months after that. Uh, ill complications of the and uh, we will talk about the complications that can happen during the procedure or shortly after. Uh, these complications uh, may include uh, complications related to the pocket, so I get pocket hematoma, infection, uh, erosion, wound pain, or allergic uh, reactions. Our pacemaker uh, complication, well, device nephsos, our lead dislodgement, uh, pneumothorax air embolism, cardiac perforation, extra cardiac stimulation, venous thrombosis, uh, coronary sinus dissection, halate CRT, Twiddler syndrome, and pacemaker malfunction. Ahnam Maradi will talk about the physical complications. Uh, next uh, lecture, we will discuss uh, more in detail the uh, pacemaker infection where a uh, pacemaker malfunction. Uh, uh, pocket hematoma, the risk of hematoma is increased in patients who are taking antithrombotic or anticoagulant drugs. Most small hematoma can be managed conservatively with compresses and withdrawal of antiplatelet or antithrombotic agents. Occasionally, a large hematoma that compromises the suture line or skin integrity may have to be surgically evacuated. بمعنى أن نحن لو العيان كون عنده هيماتوما early post operative, we deal with it very conservatively. Antibiotics to prevent this hematoma from getting infected and compresses until the pain until the to make sure that the hematoma does not increase in size. Sometimes لو it increases in size rapidly. Uh, we can do a duplex to see uh, if there is uh, continuous bleeding or not. And uh, large hematomas, the wound uh, sutures under tension, as that is rapidly expanding, or causing severe pain. The pain. We need to revise what's happening, and we have to unfortunately open the wound and find the bleeding vessel to secure it and close the wound at an increased risk of infection. A needle aspiration always increases the risk of infection and should not be done. A pacemaker-related infection a reported incidence range from 0.5% uh, to 6%. Uh, the mortality when uh, the infection reaches the lead can be as high as 66%. So it's a very dangerous uh, procedure. The risk factors include diabetes, malignancy, uh, operator inexperience, advanced age, the use of corticosteroid recently, the presence of anticoagulation because it will increase the risk of uh, hematoma, a recent device manipulation, uh, chronic renal failure, and bacteremia from a distant focus of infection. It can be defined as either a deep infection involving the generator pocket or the intravenous portion of the leads, and this always requires uh, device extraction, uh, complete hardware extraction, and uh, IV antibiotics for a variable period of time until uh, the, the, the infection resolves and then we implant a new uh, system. And during this period, if the patient is not pacemaker dependent, he does not require temporary pacing. However, if he is pacemaker dependent, that complicates things more because he will require temporary pacing and uh, immobilization for some time. A superficial infection, uh, usually characterized by local inflammation involving the skin, but not generated, uh, not the generator pocket, and is treated with uh, oral antibiotics and at home, and it should be very closely uh, followed up uh, to av to avoid it uh, spreading out to the to to the deep layers of uh, the wound and reaching the generator. Wound pain. Uh, the cause of wound pain can be infection, which is a, and can be a very serious uh, cause or a very uh, trivial reason. Uh, infection, uh, pacemaker being implanted too superficially or too laterally, and pacemaker allergy. And uh, it should be avoided by, by during implantation, creating the pocket at the proper plane for prepectoral fascia, not for superficial fascia and uh, avoiding very lateral placement of uh, the pacemaker. Uh, skin erosion can happen. 
uh, and uh, incidence around 0.8%. Risk factor include old age, infection, and the treatment would be surgical revision of the pocket and re-implantation at a deeper level at a different site. Uh, lead dislodgement, uh, this can occur in up to 5% of patients. Uh, fill atrial more than ventricular leads, about uh, double the incidence. It can be micro dislodgement. Micro dislodgement, yani, uh, or micro dislodgement, yani, clearly displaced leads. Here, for example, x ray idea, you can see that the atrial lead is pulled into the SVC. Uh, that an ICD, here, uh, the ICD, dual chamber ICD. The lead of uh, the HM is in the SVC, while the lead of the ventricle is in the SVC coil, and the RV coil is in the lead. Okay, so how do we know the micro-dislodgement? It's very useful, of course, in the X-ray, the micro-dislodgement, the manifestation of the plateau, increased pacing threshold, failure to pace or sense, and uh, high impedance. Okay, what do we do to avoid this from the start? One, uh, use of active fixation leads that we have a uh, risk. And we do slack, slack, and the lead go to the ventricle, may be not on it, and we have enough length of the pacemaker lead uh, in, uh, in the atrium with ventricle to uh, avoid traction on uh, the lead during breathing, so it can expiration or raising the arm. طيب الحاجة الثالثة إن إحنا مفروض ما نعمل حاجة من الاثنين يا إما الباكيت يبقى بالضبط على قد الباتري لي كرياتينج ا a big pocket for a small battery especially in patients who have loose subcutaneous tissue may allow battery migration and traction on the leads ففي هذه الحالة يا إما نعمل active fixation للباتري إن إحنا نثبت البطارية هنا كويس بحيث إنها ما تتحركش من مكانها أو avoid creating very large pockets for small batteries طيب حل الليد ديسلوجمنت ايه؟ حله اولويز ليد ريفيجن ان احنا نفتح تاني ونثبت الليد ده في مكانه من جديد ونقفل على اتس لايك ا ريدو بروسيدجر طيب نيوموسوركس ات اوكيرز بيتوين 1.5 ل 2.5 بيرسنت ات كان بي ديتكتد ديورينج اور اب تو 48 اورز افتر ذا بروسيدجر ات كان بي اسيمتوماتيك في الاول اند ديتكتد اونلي اون ا تشيست uh, X-ray. Is a rabbi inadverted puncture or laceration of subclavian vein or artery or the lung, were related to the operator uh, experience and the underlying anatomy. Avoid the disease. Yeah, man. We are doing axillary venous access from the start. We try to. We are looking at the first step. Away from the first strip, we try to capture the axillary vein before it joins the cephalic vein at the outer border of the first strip to avoid pleural puncture. لو دوت مش فيزيبل يبقى فينوجرام ان احنا من الاول نصور الفين بكونتراست انجكتد اند ايم فور ذا فين دايركتلي انستيد اوف بلايند فيشنج فور ذا فين. كارديك بيرفوريشن از ان كومن بات بوتنشلي سيريس كومبليكيشن الريسك بتاعها ليس ان 1% ات كان بي اكيوت ديتكتد ان ذا فيرست مانث and rarely subacute or uh, chronic or lead migration. Uh, increasing stimulation threshold, a pacing threshold is high. Right bundle branch uh, block pattern for RV pacing, intercostal muscle or diaphragmatic contraction, uh, friction rub, pericarditis, pericardial effusion, or uh, cardiac tamponade. Uh, investigation. Our here, the right uh, HL lead is uh, in the lungs. And management, uh, lead withdrawal and repositioning. Uh, some of these perforations, if it's mild, can be self-sealing. And uh, after resolution of the pericardial effusion, you can follow up these patients to find that uh, the perforation has sealed on itself, like in some time, surgical backup and surgical closure of the perforation is needed. Thank you very much. For the next we will talk more in details about the device infection, the uh, management of uh, the time for uh, re-implantation, and we will talk about 
البيسميكر مال فانكشن الفيلير تو كابتشر فيلير تو سنس والامبيدنس فاريشنز ثانك يو فيري ماتش